Good morning, everybody. Just uh, want to wish you a happy Saturday. It is so beautiful out here. And just listening to the birds and God's awesome creation. Just want to share something with you uh, from reading 1 Samuel 14. Three things that stood out to me um, that hopefully can be a blessing to you as well. Um, in 1 Samuel 14, um, Saul and Jonathan are at a, a battle area with the Philistines. And Jonathan and his armor bearer go out and no one knows it. Um, and what follows is pretty interesting. And here's three things that stick out to me. Number one, the great faith of Jonathan. He had an awesome, assured faith in God. And in verse 6b, it says, Perhaps the Lord will act in our behalf. Nothing can hinder the Lord from saving, whether by many or by few. So I want to encourage us to have faith in God. Um, no matter what you're going through, trust that he will be there with you and for you. Um, in the very next verse, in verse 7, uh, I really was drawn to what the armor bearer said. It's someone who kind of served at the leisure of Jonathan. Um, I don't know if he was kind of a friend or if he was just a servant. However, um, it made me think about what kind of friend or what kind of confidant am I to, to the friends of my peer groups around me. He said, go ahead, I am with you heart and soul. I mean, that, that's pouring out like I'm with you to the end of the earth, ride or die, whatever uh, Jonathan, I'm with you, um, and I want to challenge you, and I want to challenge myself first, that what kind of uh, friend am I? What kind of friend are you? Um, are we ready to go to the hilt with our friends, um, heart and soul, all we got? Uh, let's make sure we are that way. And the third thing is uh, pray with belief and pray big prayers. Uh, I know for too long in my personal life, I prayed safe prayers or um, I didn't really uh, pray these large prayers um, to get me out of my comfort zone or maybe I just didn't think God could do something bigger. Um, but when I study more and more, um, God wants us to pray big prayers. Uh, he wants to show up and do amazing, amazing things. So um, pray with belief in big prayers. And this is seen in verse 15. Um, it says, then panic struck the whole army, those in the camp and field, and those in the outposts and raiding parties, and the ground shook. It was a panic sent by God. So God showed up, shook the ground. Um, God can show up in your life and do miracles, do crazy, awesome things. Uh, we need to make sure it's aligned with his will, um, and he will bless those endeavors. Um, but let's change the world um, and ask God to help us be used uh, by him and for him. I'm uh, doing a devotional. I want to get the book, and I encourage you to as well. And if you do, let me know what you think. It's by Craig Groeschel from Life Church, uh, called Dangerous Prayers. It's on U version. On day two, um, he talked about a couple things um, about dangerous prayers. A couple things that um, I took away was one of the scriptures says, "You have not because you ask not." A lot of us don't even talk to God about things we're struggling with or we go through we try to solve it all or ask our friends and then at the end we uh, say hey God help me I, I don't have any other way but let's do that first let's seek God and his wisdom and his help um, I am praying big prayers in 2020 uh, I've got four or five big prayers of favor that I am laying before God and I encourage you to do the same thing write them down uh, go to him daily um, couple things from Craig Rochelle in day two of the dangerous prayers that stuck out to me uh, was he said uh, if we look at Jesus example he says your will be done not mine now that's dangerous because we think we're God of our own lives sometimes or a lot of times um, and it's dangerous to say you know what God I'm leaving it in your hands your will be done not mine but we have an awesome loving father that we can trust uh, with anything that we're going through um, the other thing is Jesus never asked us to do anything he didn't do or wouldn't do. A um, couple uh, verses you can check out um, in relation to this is Matthew 6, 5 through 7. I recommend the New Living Translation or the Message Version. Uh, Revelation 3, 15 and 16. Luke 22, 42. And Hebrews 4, 14 to 16. Um, this was so good, this uh, day two of Dangerous Prayers, that I just want to read 
I typically don't read uh, anything to you guys, but uh, I'm just going to read this and, and leave you with this. It says, I worry that for a lot of people, prayer is like buying a lottery ticket, a chance at life here on earth that's problem-free, stress-free, and pain-free. For others, prayer is merely a sentimental routine, like reciting favorite song lyrics or a nursery rhyme. Yet others pray only because they feel guilty if they don't. But none of these prayers reflect the life that Jesus came to give us. Again, in John 10, 10, Jesus said, I came to give you life and life to the full. Instead, it says he calls us to leave everything to follow him. Jesus didn't challenge others to leave their own wills behind. He too lived a dangerous faith. He touched lepers, showed grace to prostitutes, stood bravely in the face of danger. Then he told us we could do that and do more. That's why we simply can't settle for asking God just to bless our food. We can come boldly to the throne of grace, the Bible tells us. Do you know that? You can come to the throne of God with boldness and assuredness that he wants to hear from you. You know, most people will be intimidated going to see a king here on earth or a president or things like that. But God tells us, the creator of the universe, that we can come boldly to the throne of grace. How awesome is that? Um, so I'll leave you with that. Um, think about the great faith of Jonathan. Be encouraged by that. Um, be a great friend uh, and a confidant to those in your circle. And then pray with belief in big prayers. And three things about prayer. Your prayer matters. How you pray matters. And what you pray matters. Check out the devotional by Craig Rochelle, Dangerous Prayers. God bless.